Welcome, everybody. We are so glad that you could join us for this evening of refresh. How many of you feel like you are in the right space and in need of some serious refreshing? Me too. Me too. So let me tell you how this evening came about. My dear friend Heather shared with me um, an idea that she and a couple of her leaders came up with after attending Diamond Bound. And we talked about this and I thought, oh my word, this sounds like something I would like to go through. And they did it with their team. And then I, I wasn't able to do it live, but I, I watched the recording and I participated as though it was happening in real time. And it was extremely powerful. And I said, Heather, <laughs> would there be any way that you and your gals and Evangeline Reed, who we're going to get to that in just a second, if you would be willing to share that with our team? And she was not even hesitant for a moment, which thank you, Heather. I appreciate that so much. Um, we, we have a lot of experience and brain power and goodness tonight to share with you. So Heather Osterheis is a platinum leader. She lives just north of us in the, the Des Moines area in Iowa. And I want to give kudos to her and to a couple of her leaders, um, Stacy Halbaugh and Maria Campbell. And I'm not sure if they're on here um, or not, but I love them both dearly. And I am very grateful for their brains tonight because they are extremely thorough and organized. And if, if you know me, you know that there's never been an outline that looked like this before a class. <laughs> I said, Heather, could you share your notes? And she sends me this document. I'm like, holy cow, it's already typed up. You're amazing. So kudos to you. The other wonderful blessing and bonus tonight is that we have our upline crown diamond, Evangeline Reed with us. Evangeline is coming to us from Texas. And how many of you have had the pleasure of meeting her before? Maybe at convention or at another event? Quite a few of you, awesome. She is, she is just a gift to our team. And we were lucky enough to be together in Utah earlier this week. And so I feel like I've hugged her very recently, which is a very nice feeling. So Evangeline, thank you for sharing a little bit of your Friday night with us as well. Um, if we haven't met yet, my name is Skyla Mann, and I just want to say thank you for being here. We decided to, to open this up to a, a fun cross-section of people, so we've got lots of teams converging together tonight because there's lots of us who need a refresh. <laughs> so um, without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Heather, and she is going to walk us through this. I will say one, one more quick thing. As we wrap up tonight, depending on which team you are part of and who your upline is, there may be a different next step for you. So I'm gonna be sharing what um, Britta and I are doing collaboratively next. And if you are not on Britta's team or my team, we will not be offended if you peace out and, and hang up and go, if you want to hear what we're doing, because it might inspire you, stay on with us. Okay. So Heather, please, the floor is yours. Well, Skyla, thank you so much for organizing this tonight. And, and if you know Skyla at all, one of the things that you probably love most about her is just her enthusiasm. I, I just love brainstorming with her because she's such a cheerleader for she just it, she just is one of those people that will just sit lock arms with you and propel you with her joyous spirit and so when i came home overflowing with these ideas that stacy and maria and i had put together on our trip home from diamond bound she was one of the first people i called because if it was even remotely a good idea she would breathe 
all kinds of life and, and light that fire. So I am more than happy to share this with all of you um, just because of, of, of what her friendship means to me. So thank you for inviting me. And I recall when I was sharing it with Evangeline also, I had asked her to join our original meeting because she had coached me through a difficult situation. And I said, Evangeline, what you just worked me through with worked through with me would be amazing to go with this, this refresh idea that we're doing. So I'm thrilled that she's here to share that with all of you also. I know you'll be so blessed to hear that also. So let's get into the work, okay? It feels a little bit abrupt to just dig into these cards, but the, but the good stuff comes after we do the cards. So would you grab for me those three index cards or three post-it notes or three separate pieces of paper? And we're gonna spend a little bit of time filling these cards out. Now, this is just between you and whoever you decide to share it with, which doesn't have to be anyone. So this is this is just private. It's not something we're gonna ask you to share with us later, unless that you feel like you would like to. Um, so be as honest and as candid with yourself as you possibly can. And we are gonna take time between each of these cards to allow you some work time, just some quiet time. So if you have music nearby that you'd like to play, we, we tried to play music through our Zoom speakers and it just sounds choppy and awkward and that doesn't set the mood at all. So if you like the quiet space of your home, great. If you wanna put a playlist on your phone, great, it's up to you. Um, so let's get started. On your first card, you can just put a little one in the corner to keep it straight as we talk through them. Okay. I would like you to take some time, take a deep breath. And you are going to unload on this card number one. If there is anything that you are frustrated about in regards to young living, I want you to write this on the card. Okay. It can be little notes. It could just be little words. It can just be, it can be sentences. You don't have to write paragraphs or anything. It could just be whatever little words prompt you for what you mean. Just unload that in your mind. Okay. If there's been an annoyance about your growth in the Young Living business, write it down. Maybe there's something that used to be that isn't any longer. You can write it down. Some of you have been around young, young Living long enough to have gone through the compliance changes. Maybe there are some things from that that you're still holding on to and struggling through or have some, some kind of feelings about, right? Write that down. Is there something that has driven you to frustration and possibly made you press pause on building a young living business. If you can identify what that is, write that down. And maybe you don't have words for why you pressed pause or took a break or stepped away. Maybe you don't have words for that, but you could just write down the word pause or the word break. If that is giving you any kind of feelings about that. And this is card number one. Um, I see we may have had some people pop on. We'll keep, yeah, thank you for putting that in the notes, Skyla. So just, we're gonna give you some time to spend on that. Just write it all down, okay? This is just between you and the card, you and the Lord, right? So mm -hmm. don't feel like you have to hide anything. Just go ahead and put everything down that you can think of. And we're gonna give you a few minutes to do that. Yeah.
As you're working through this, if any oils stand out to you right now as you're processing, if you need some help thinking about things, maybe grab some frankincense um, for your forehead. Um, if you are wanting to put some release on, you can put some release in your hand and smell that deeply. You can rub that over your liver, which is on your right side under, <clears throat> under your rib cage. Sometimes, sometimes these things bring up feelings, right? Just allow that to come. As you're continuing to write, if you need a few more minutes, go ahead and keep writing. And if you're done, if you feel like you've written, written everything down that's come to mind, just kind of look up and I'll know that you're, you're done working. I wanna give everyone enough time to, to, to process a good amount. Oh yeah, that's great. If you feel like you have, have, have reached the end of your frustration list, go ahead and type done in the chat box. About half of you are done so far. I'll give you one more minute to wrap up. If you could give Young Living a piece of your mind, what would you say? You can put that on your card. All right, a few more seconds here and we'll move on to the second card. All right, I invite you to, to set that first card aside. If, if something else comes to mind later as we're working through these other cards, feel free to go back and, and jot it down on your card, that's okay. But we're gonna go ahead with card number two. You can put a little number two in the top corner if you want. On this card, I want you to write down all the things you love about Young Living, all right? And I know a card's not big enough, right? We all have our favorite products, our favorite personal stories about how these products have changed your life maybe how they've changed the life of someone you love. 
someone you know? Is there a product you just can't live without? Something you're super thankful for? What about the business? What do you love about the Young Living business? How has Young Living changed your life? How has the business changed your life? Another way to think about that would be, why is this business worth fighting for? What was the moment when you saw oils work right in front of your eyes and you were amazed? How has the financial opportunity changed your life already? In what way has that provided opportunities or dreams or hope? What about the financial opportunity is exciting to you? Do you have a why for doing the Young Living business? Write your why down if you already know what it is or what it used to be, maybe it's changed. That's okay. An older past why is still exciting to think through. If you have a new one, you can write that down. If you're not ready to think about a new one yet, that's okay. But what about Young Living is worth fighting for? Are you inspired by the Young Living Foundation? Do you have your own things that the Young Living Finances allow you to invest your money in that allow you to give in some way, either financially or emotionally, spiritually, the ways that you bless people? So we'll give you a few more minutes to Ponder through that. If you're, when you're done, you can type done in the chat box. We'll give you another minute or two here to wrap that up. Those of you who are done, if you feel like you want to share one thing, one word from that second card, what's worth fighting for? What are you thankful for? You don't have to explain it. You could just type ninja. You could just type time freedom, whatever it is. And you want to share that, go ahead. You do not have to. It might inspire others to think about something they hadn't thought of yet. Ah, community, integrity, community, positivity, friendships. Oh, staying home with your kids. Oh, I love that. Healthy lifestyle. Mm. All you've learned. Self-love, relationships. These are amazing things. Oh. 
purity. All right, as you're wrapping up that second card, um, go ahead and set it to the side. Again, if you continue to think of things you wanna to add to card one or two as we work on card three, that's completely fine. But go ahead and pull out that third card. This is the card that uh, is all about you, okay? This is where you can write down areas you know you need to grow in, okay? So what skills do you need that you can already identify that would be helpful to you in, in order to build a, to be a better business builder? Maybe it's to be a better mother or a better wife, a better friend, a better daughter. What areas of your life do you ignore because it's too hard to face and deal with? Where can you grow? These are your personal growth areas. Maybe, you know, sometime in the past I have I have felt like I needed to grow, but I didn't, I wasn't able to identify it with a word. Put a question mark. Or maybe, maybe a symbol that like open hands, if you're an artist and you want to draw a little, you know, a little open hands, like I'm open to receiving the inspiration for the next growth area for me. That's okay. Is it communication? Is it courage? Is it openness? Is it willingness? What, what areas are you aware of that growth would benefit you? I'll give you just another minute here to finish that up. All right, as you're wrapping that up, again, if you, if you think of some things here as we move on, um, feel free to jot them on those three cards. Before we, before we start talking about our three cards, I, I wanna share a really life-giving idea that uh, one of my friends has coached me through. Her name is Heidi Vermeerquist. She's local to me in Iowa. She's a dear friend and a believer and she is uh, a christian uh, counselor by trade that's what she does for a living and she has written a really great book called grounding gardening your life and i forgot to share this with my team it's it's not a super well-known book yet but uh you can get it i can give you her website later it might be on amazon i actually have no idea but one of the things that she shared with me really helps me when I think through some struggle points uh, in my thinking. So I call it the O zone because there's three areas of life that often get us stuck. If we're feeling anxious or depressed or just stuck, it's often because we're living in the O zone. So the O zone is old stuff others and outcomes. And if you wanna jot that down, you can. Old stuff, others and outcomes. So old stuff is the past, okay? Things that have already happened and, and they're, they're um, as far back as you can go. For example, compliance stuff, right? Things in compliance, that's old stuff. It's already happened. Your childhood, it's already happened, old stuff. Um, others is uh, what other people are doing 
maybe what other people are not doing, what other people might think, how they might react to you, or what they might say about you. Whenever we're thinking about other people, that can often make us anxious or depressed. And then the third outcomes, worrying about the future, different expectations, those often come out in our thinking as what ifs. What if they say this? What if I take this action and I don't get the result I'm looking for, right? So I want you to take a look at card number one. And can you look through, this is not for discussion, but can you just in your own mind, look through and identify, are there any ozone items on your card one? Is there any old stuff on that card? Are there any, any others? Any outcomes? Any what if thinking? Sometimes we can notice a theme, all right? Sometimes, um, sometimes we have, we, we deal with all three of the ozone areas. Sometimes uh, a person might be just stuck in, in one major area. So notice, just take notice, is it, it's just a curious something to observe for yourself. It, do, you, do you have a lot of old stuff? Do you have a lot of others? Do you have a lot of outcomes? Maybe you have a mix of them all, that's okay. Just take notice of it. I find that having a label for something is often really freeing just to become aware of it, okay? So if you have your oils near you, I wanna invite you to grab something along the lines of release or surrender, maybe acceptance, present time, something along those lines that you have. And I'm gonna invite you right now to put that on. If you've got some present time, if you're finding that you're often in the past, right, dealing with old stuff, present time's a really great oil for you to start putting across your forehead, maybe on the back of your neck, okay? Also release, putting that over your liver, letting go of some of those things in the past that have already happened, letting go of other people's expectations of you, other people's reactions to you. All right, so grab card number one, okay? Hold it up. You don't have to show the writing if you don't want to. And you're gonna rip it, rip it up. Card number one, you're ripping it up, okay? I want tiny little pieces. There is absolutely nothing you can do about this card. Everything on card number one is completely out of your control, right? There's no sense dwelling on those things, completely out of your control. They do not matter. You can't do anything about it. Can't control other people. Can't fix the past, it's already happened. Can't go back and change it. And the outcomes, the future hasn't happened yet. It's full of possibilities. So that may have made you change your breathing a little bit. So maybe grab that release again. Take a deep breath. Maybe you need to put on some white Angelica. Especially if, if others is, is something that is a, a theme for you. Okay, maybe you need some forgiveness or some present time acceptance. Just smell them, put them on, maybe some humility. I like to put humility over my heart, higher unity. Whatever you have in your stash that speaks to you about this, I just want you to anoint yourself right now and give yourself permission to release that card, to let it go. And let's move forward. Card number two, okay, let's pick up card number two. This is your motivation and encouragement card. I'm gonna invite you to take a look at this card daily. Put it somewhere where you're gonna see it. Why is this business and these products worth fighting for? Maybe you wanna put this on your mirror. Maybe you wanna put it um, by your kitchen where you wash dishes. Maybe you wanna put it in your Bible or use it as a bookmark in the book you're reading right now. 
but make sure that you can read daily this, this as your encouragement. These are the reasons why you put in the work, why you would show up and keep learning and keep sharing. Maybe your computer, your mirror, something where you'll see it every day and to remind and encourage you on your why. And you can continue to add to this card as you experience more reminders of all that is good about Young Living and this opportunity and these products, okay? Card number three, grab card number three. This is your growth area. This is actually the only card that you have control over. Let that sink in a minute. These are the things that you can work on. These are the things that will bring about change for you in any area of your life. So what oils are in your stash already that speak to you about this? As you look at the things that you wrote on your card, grab Maybe you're going to gravitate to a certain oil. I'm going to invite you right now to just look at your stash and see one oil that you gravitate to that speaks to you about this card and your growth. And I'm going to invite you over the next 90 days to use this oil daily. And you can change it. I know there's some personalities that are like, oh, I don't know. I need to think about this. And I might get the wrong oil. And I don't, I don't want to be locked into an oil. It's okay. I give you full permission to choose an oil right now and totally change your mind tomorrow or 30 days from now. It's okay. But for right now, in this moment, as you think about this card and your growth, what is the oil that you're gravitating to? Um, some ideas include magnify your purpose into the future, believe, transformation, valor, abundance, inspiration, gathering, gratitude, build your dream, highest potential. Maybe it's just hope, right? I don't want to say just hope. I mean, Hope is a huge thing. I love Skyla was just sharing about a book that she has started reading about hope. And I hope she'll share about that later. But hope is a huge factor in just our ability to move forward, okay? So I would love to turn it over to Evangeline now and allow her to share with you some further ideas about thoughts and emotions and how to move forward. Okay, that was beautiful. Thank you, Heather. What a great exercise that is. Probably one we could go through one month and still get a lot out of it. So um, I'm really proud of you all. I'm really, really tickled to see how many people are on here. Um, you know, to be willing to come together and do hard work in inner work like this um, in the middle of what we're all going through in the world right now is pretty, it's pretty amazing. So I just want to give, have you all give yourselves a pat on the back for showing up <laughs> to be willing to do this. Okay. Um, so my little piece of this is that I started going through some coaching from a lady named Kristen Boss back in the summer and uh, she has a particular type of um, thought model that she does that is really, really powerful and profound that can help us get out of some of our stinking thinking that we have. Um, so it is a very human thing for all of these things, especially the things that are on your card one or that were on card one. Um, for those things to occupy our minds. And uh, some of those things are, you know, actual things that we can't do a whole lot about. Th those things were your frustrations, either with Young Living or with your own business and how things are going, all of those kind of things. Um, and, you know, in Young Living, sometimes we want to just pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and we want to say, you know what, here's the things to do. I can give you a list. Um, here are the steps that you take to be a successful leader. Now, take that list and go do it. And, and we just expect that somehow people are going to magically be able to produce the actions that are on that list. 
Um, and most people, even with training, even with coaching, even with modeling to them, may struggle in some of those things. And the reason they may struggle is that um, thoughts don't produce actions. Guess what produces actions? Emotions. You have to be in the right emotional state in order to act. Um, and so that's the model that Kristen Boss teaches. And I'm going to put in the little message chat here um, the order of things so you can kind of follow with me, or maybe somebody else can type it while I'm talking. Um, the very first step of this thought model is C for circumstance. So it's just what circumstance am I going through right now? That could be any circumstance in your business. It could be, you know, you have these thoughts and feelings of, wow, my, my volume has dropped over the last year. Um, I've, people are leaving my team over the last year. I have fewer members. Um, so you might have those circumstances. Those are, those are real things. If you can actually track that with numbers, that's a real thing. That's a fact. Maybe your number of people on your team has dropped. Maybe your volume has dropped. Maybe your paycheck has dropped. Those are real actual circumstances that you are experiencing. And there's not a good or bad to them. They just are, okay? The next step is the T for thought. And your thought um, around that circumstance can vary pretty widely from person to person and from day to day and from moment to moment sometimes, depending upon you know, how, um, how life is treating us today. So I might think on any given day, I might think, oh my goodness, my team is dying. I, I don't know what is going on, but I, it's a losing battle. And, <clears throat> you know, it's just going to keep sliding downhill. That, might, that thought might go through my mind. So in this thought model, that's just a thought. We can choose a different thought. I'll get back to that in just a minute. The next step in the thought model is your feelings or emotions. So when I have a thought that, oh my goodness, my team is losing steam, it's losing members, it's, it's smaller than it was two years ago, something has gone terribly wrong, it might be me, um, that, th that, uh, em that thought produces emotions in you. Are those positive emotions that show up there? Not for me. <laughs> for me, those would be like, you know, almost panicky emotions, like, like from a place of lack, from a place of the not enough, instead of from a place of peace, abundance, uh, joy, energy, loving what I do. I'm coming from a place of, I don't want to lose what I've got. That's a negative uh, emotional response to that. Now, the very next step is your action step. So right under your emotion or your feeling is action. When you have a feeling like I just described, what actions do you take or not take? Yeah, that doesn't make me want to work. That actually doesn't make me want to even pick up the phone and call somebody. It doesn't want to, it doesn't help me get creative. It doesn't help me think of possibilities or, you know, come up with a, a game plan for, you know, connecting people or a game plan for education so that I can help, you know, retain some people. It makes me do, want to do nothing. I just want to sit and scroll my telegram feed or something, you know, like let me zone out and not think about that because that thought stresses me out. So, um, so the, the feelings are what produce the action, whether it's in our personal life or in our business. And if we don't recognize that it is actually feelings driving the action, um, we can beat ourselves up even more. Like, I know what to do and I'm not doing it. What's wrong with me? What, what's wrong with me? I know exactly what to do to fix this thing, but I'm not doing it. I, and, I, and I can't make myself do it somehow. <laughs> it's because we have to get into a different emotional state to be able to want to do those things, okay? So the last step in this thought model, there's five steps to it. We've got the circumstance, We've got our thought that we have around that circumstance, positive or negative. We've got the feelings that we have as a result of that thought. And then we have the action that we take as the result of the feelings. And the final step is our results. What is showing up for us? What is showing up? And um, 
if I'm in a co continual um, unconscious, they call it an unconscious thought pattern that's kind of negative, I'm not really choosing this thought pattern. It's just showing up in my head, right? And it is automatically producing these emotions that I really don't like, but I don't know how to get out of this spiral that I'm in. So it's an unconscious thought model. I'm, I'm doing it, not, not choosing it. So once I become aware of this and I realize it's that unconscious thought model and those emotions and, and lack of action that's resulting, that's causing my result that I don't like, which is my team probably continuing to uh, slide or whatever is going on in my team right now. Um, until I recognize and own the fact that that's what's producing the result that I'm getting that I don't like and that I have power over that, what's my power? Can I just magically change my emotions? No, I got to think a different thought. I've got to go all the way back up underneath that circumstance, which hasn't changed. And again, circumstances are not positive or negative. They're just facts. There's something that everybody could look at and say and agree that, yes, that is a fact. You did have 50 people on your team. Now you have 30 people on your team. That's the fact. You know, there's nothing that we can argue with about that. But the thought I have around that fact can change and it can vary. So, um, so it, I can think another true thought. Now, it has to be a thought that I can... I can actually get on board with, and sometimes we have to have a little thought bridge in order to get there. So it might be like, um, no matter how bad we want to believe the opposite thought or something, some good thought about it, we just can't get ourselves there. So a thought bridge might be, um, it's possible that this is the case here. So my, my thought around my team dropping in numbers might be, it's possible that all these people that enrolled two years ago really weren't part of the Young Living Lifestyle and really didn't resonate with our message. And they got their kit and moved on. And that it's okay that this is the number that I have right now, because these are my committed people. And we're all going to get excited and go out and enroll some more people. And we're going to build this thing over again. And it's going to be even better than it was before, because this is my foundation. Now I know who I'm working with that really, really loves these products and loves the company. And these are the people that aren't going anywhere. And they've just revealed themselves by hanging in there over the last couple of years, right? So does that produce a different emotion in me when I think that way? And you could do this with any number of negative circumstances, any number of, uh, or of circumstances, you know, that may feel negative. My clue that I, my thought, has interpreted that circumstance as negative is that negative emotion that I'm feeling. So it, this can happen in any area of life. I walked my son through this earlier today with his uh, little business that he started where he's dreading something coming up and he's recognizing this dread in himself every single week. I dread this for some reason, what is going on here? And so we talked through it. What, is that, what does that tell you? So that's going to make you really want to do the social media for that thing, isn't it? It's really going to make you want to get in there and call people and get new people to go to that thing, right? No, no, like it shuts you down. It makes you not want to do anything. So basically what we're looking at here is taking, for those of you who have a, a biblical, you know, um, worldview, it's taking every thought captive. It's questioning every single thought, especially those thoughts that are triggering negative emotions. And um, I want you to know that confidence is a learned skill. Confidence is not something you are born with. Confidence is not something that magically just shows up in your life because you're magically good at things or whatever. Confidence is a learned skill. And becoming confident in where you're going and what you're doing and how effective what you're doing is and whether it's going to have a good result or not, that confidence is something you are your biggest cheerleader. You are your biggest encourager. And a daily thought model sheet, I'm going to pop in the, the comments here. There's a couple of different places that you can go to get training on this if you want to. One of them, some of us pay $2,000 to join this academy where we're being trained weekly in this thought model. 
and some other things, social media and things like that. And that is at Kristen Boss's website. So kristenboss.com. Um, powerful training. It's not, it may not be in your budget and I get that. Um, and as a crown diamond, I'm always looking for that thing that's going to help me to help my people. So I'm willing to invest in things like this. If you are willing to invest even just a little bit in this, I highly encourage you to go seek out Leslie Burris and she's a platinum in Young Living. And she has a Young Living focused training that's right along these lines. And hers is called uh, the Brand Partner Academy. Does anybody have the link? I think I can find it here if you don't. But hers is, if you, if you use the, the, um, the coupon code to take half off, Leslie's is only 20 bucks for a lifetime access. That's totally doable for almost everybody in here, right? Totally doable. And she walks you That's, through. Yeah, lifetime access. Let that sink in. 20 bucks, lifetime. Right. And so the code is exactly this. Take half off. Oops, too many half. It looks just like that. And that's how you get the $20 instead of the $40 um, entrance fee. And you're going to download a little app on your phone called Kajabi. And that Kajabi app will, will actually help walk you through all the lessons that Leslie already has recorded for you in there. And some papers that will help you. So like this little um, self-coaching thing. What did I do with it? I'm going to see if I can drag this into the, whoops, where did my Zoom window go? There it is. It's some self-coaching worksheets. Y'all let me know if it came through. Yeah, I think it did. So it, it, has, it has a line that says C for circumstance, T for thought, F for feeling, A for... Um, action and then R for results. And so this is a really powerful self-coaching tool that we can all do. So you get up in the morning. Here's how this works. You get up in the morning, you know, you have like three things that are top on your list that you would love to do for your business. Uh, one of those might be a couple of care calls. One of those might be sending out an email and one of those might be um, scheduling a class. And one or the other of those is causing you some negative emotions for some reason. Maybe it's those care calls that you're, you're nervous about for some reason. So you're telling yourself a thought about those care calls. When you feel that negative emotion, that's the time to self-coach yourself. What is going on here? Why am I feeling negative about the things that I know as a business owner would move me forward in my business and that I would really like to accomplish? And if I, if I, can, if I can figure out that unconscious thought model, now I can go over to the other side of the page, which has my intentional thought model. Same circumstance applies. I need to do three care calls today. What's my thought around that? I can change the thought. Instead of thinking these people don't want to be bothered by me, they're going to think I'm trying to sell them something. You know, um, I probably won't get through to them anyway because they're all at work and this is, you know, uh, this is the time I have to call. So it's not going to work. Uh, all of those thoughts could roll through my mind. Or I could think, these people are going to be so grateful that I have taken the time to reach out and connect with them. I'm just going to leave them a little message if they're not there. And I'm going to let them know how excited I am to actually be able to talk to them and support them. I'm going to make sure they have my phone number if they have any questions. And I might follow up with a little email and just say, hey, I'd love to know what products do you have in your house that you don't know how to use? Would you, you know, call me sometime and let's talk about it and see if I can help you. So I can change my thinking around that to where I feel like, these people are going to be so grateful for my phone call and they're going to be uh, it. This is what is going to build relationships on my team. And that if for some reason I make somebody mad, that's bad on them, not on me. Right. Because I'm there to serve them. And I know that I'm coming from a place of service and from heart. And so then I walk myself through that intentional thought model. That's a different thought than being afraid of doing those care calls. So the feelings that come are empowerment, their confidence, and they will hear that when I get on the phone with them, even if I leave a message, they're going to hear that confidence because I feel like I really am doing it to help them. And the action that follows is I actually will make the care call, 
right? I actually might pick up the phone and make the care call or at least text them and say, hey, you got a minute? <laughs> I'd love to chat with you. Um, and the result is I made a connection. You know, I did some things that pulled my business forward that day, but it took me changing my thought, which changed my emotion, which changed my action, which changed my result. So there you go. That's all I got on that. Thank you so, so much. I think for me, hearing this over and over from different people's vantage points really helps cement it in my brain. And you did an exquisite job explaining that thought model, Evangeline. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your time being with us tonight. We love it. I have a very quick little exercise, a little quiz that I want you to walk through with me. It's two questions, okay? What I want you to ask yourself is at this moment in time, on January 14th, where are you in your belief level in the effectiveness of the Young Living products? On a scale of one to 10, how confident are you in the products doing the things that we believe that they are called to do, where are you in that belief level? Jot that number down. You can put it in the chat box if you want to. You don't have to, but you certainly can. I see some tens. <laughs> True story, Candy. Okay. So a lot of you are, are really confident in your belief that the Young Living products do what they say they're going to do, that they come from the place that they say they come from, and you're, you're very comfortable in that. That is wonderful to see. Now, my second question is, where are you in your belief that the business opportunity is what it says it is? And I'm not talking about your current or past experience necessarily, but where are you in believing that it's possible that you could achieve whatever goal it is that you might have for yourself. What is your level of belief on a scale of one to 10 on the Young Living business? Jot that number down. So here is my question. If you have a nine or a 10 in the products, you are virtually unwavering. Is it worth it? Even if your belief in the business might be a seven or an eight, I don't think I saw anything below that. Is it worth it? To, to put in the effort that you need to on all the things we listed on card number three, is it worth expending the energy and the effort to become the best versions of ourself so that we can get the best products into the hands of people whose lives we know we're going to change? It's inevitable. And, and I, I will be the first to say, I don't have a personal testimony with all 600 products, but guess what? I don't need all 600 products. I might need a half a dozen that just kick me in the tail to shift my wellness to a place where I really wanna shout it from the rooftops. And if you have that level of belief, 
we can't help but share it. So keep those numbers in mind. And, and the other thing, I think I learned this from, from Big Al Schreider. Anybody remember Tom, Big Al Schreider, who when we had him come to Des Moines once, he stood up about right here on me. <laughs> He's the tiniest guy, it's so funny. And I think it was him who said, when you ask prospects, so where are you on a scale of one to 10 for being ready to, to jump into my business with me? Where are you to get, to get started with the products? And if somebody said, well, Tom, I think I'm a seven, you know what his answer would be? What can I do to turn you into an eight? That's it. We don't have to come all the way. So I would say to you, if you're an eight right now on your belief in the business, what can we do to help you become a nine? What is that little component that you're like, oh, I'm almost all in, but I'm, I still feel a little weird about something. Talk to us about that, okay? That's what we're here for. And Evangeline is a great example. She has been, she has been in Young Living longer than any of us here. And you guys, she's still learning and she's still coaching and she's still reading books. It never ends, okay? I don't know if that's good news or bad news for you, but, but we're, always, we're always working to become a better version of ourselves. So do not lose hope, okay? Let us help you take that next step. All right, so you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. I'm gonna go ahead and, and wrap up the recording at this point, but if you wanna stick around, please do.